There's a sense in which everything that's cursed <coughs> or contaminated, everything that's contaminated must be removed. What's contaminated cannot be improved in God's economy. It can't be recovered. It can't be renewed. There we, therefore we read about the heavens and the earth that now is and the new heavens and the new earth are going to replace it. Presently, we have a house not made with hands. But we have a, a um, tabernacle, earthly tabernacle, that's going to be replaced yeah. by a house not made with hands. It, it's got to go. Man's essential person must be born again. Flesh and blood and everything that goes along with it cannot inherit the kingdom of God. Flesh, by de flesh and blood, by definition, is what God created in the Garden of Eden. It has to be a new thing made. Yeah. Now, this is, a, this is an important principle to see. Reformation is a purely human concept. Yeah. God's not in the business of reformation. Mm -hmm. There have been the religious reformations that have brought incalculable good to the God's people, but they've never really changed what they set out to reform. Mm -hmm. Luther sought to reform Catholicism. He had noble ambitions. But he didn't do it. And many other reformers. He, John Calvin sought to reform the Anglican religion and didn't do it. Alexander Campbell tried to reform the more up-to-date fundamentalist namely in the Baptist camp, which was more general in those days. It did, didn't work. Mm -hmm. Reformation doesn't work. Never has worked. People that try and reform people's morals, mm -hmm. they have to co be constantly reforming. If they let them go, if they miss the meetings, they don't come, uh -huh. they lapse back. Uh -huh. We have the old man that commenced at the point there was a new man. There was no such thing as an old man until the new man. Right. The new is what makes the old old. Right. As the old man, mm -hmm. he's got he can't you can't change him. Mm -hmm. He's got to he's got to go. So then we have a new man yeah. <clears throat> that for a while, by divine design, they lived together for a while to tutor and strengthen and this sort of thing, but eventually, in the end, only one of them can exist. Amen. You got the old covenant. He was weak through the flesh, not on his own accord. He couldn't last. People that try and go back to that are very foolish people, even though they have doctorate degrees. It has to go. Why? Because there's a new, there's a new covenant. See, this is a principle woven throughout Scripture. That the whatever's contaminated <clears throat> has to go. So you die daily. You just don't change habits. People think people were being a little, little hard, attacking, and I personally am attacking it attacking the idea of forming new habits. Mm -hmm. This is not this is not a godly thought. Amen. They have to be eliminated. Mm -hmm. The old man has to die. Flesh has to die. Amen. It has to die. Yes. 
It cannot be changed. Mm -hmm. You can't clean up a dirty thought. That's right. Can't be done. Now our text proclaims the world, which is the mother of everything that's passing away. <clears throat> everything that's passing away is tied to the world in some, some way. And our text said that Jesus has delivered us. He has delivered us from this present evil world according to the will of God and our Father. The world is called evil even though it hasn't sinned. <laughs> it's the only thing that hasn't sinned that is evil, but it hasn't sinned. It's it's received a stain uh -huh. from those that occupied it, and it was only two people at the time. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. This vast globe yeah. was only occupied by two people. Yeah. And, and it was covered as much space as it does now, but it was a more infinitely more living space than is now, and yet these two people brought forth a curse of the entire earth, the heavens, the sun, the moon, the stars, the universe, the cosmos, the worlds, plural. They had to go. Why? Because in God's economy, a clean thing cannot be sustained in an unclean environment. Not ultimately. And the other way around, an unclean thing cannot subsist in a clean environment. They can't, they, they, they appear simultaneous for a while, but that's just so people will learn that they can't be united. That's why it's so wrong for a professing Christian to think like the world. This is a lot worse than people think it is. That's why it's so wrong for a professing Christian to abandon activities that culture the soul for activities that please the flesh. This is why this is so long, e wrong. Even though the activities may not be moral, immoral of themselves, in fact, they may be rather cultured, but they're still wrong if they dictate how a person lives and what they give their time to, what they invest most themselves in. Uh -huh. This is why I applaud some of the great hymnists of old who were quite gifted people, yeah. but they gave themselves, they gave themselves to the higher interest. Amen. Amen. Mm -hmm. People that have abilities, mm -hmm. yes. talents, and they are Christians, and they give them to the world, it's not going to go well on the day of judgment. There may be a lot, there may be a lot now of, of defense of this kind of thing, saying, well, we'll make a good, better living, and so forth and so forth. But unless God doesn't give people gifts for this world. Amen. Any gifts for this world. Amen. Deliverance from the <clears throat> from the domain called the world, the habitat called the world. That's why Jesus gave himself as a sacrifice to God. This is one view of this. He gave himself for sin. Here's another. You turn turn the diamond uh, to another a little degree or two, and this perspective pops up. That he died because you couldn't get free from this world unless he did. Yeah. Jesus died to deliver us from this present evil world. So, <laughs> a person who chooses to wed themselves to this world while wearing Christ's name has, in fact, crucified Christ afresh Amen. and put him to an open shame. Otherwise, this verse doesn't make any sense right. at all. It would make just as much sin to go back into adultery and fornication and drunkenness mm -hmm, mm -hmm. as it would to servitude to the world in any form. Mm -hmm. Died to deliver us from this present evil world. 
Now, how do, exactly how does all this fit together? Well, the world <clears throat> is united, irrevocably united with this, things called lusts. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The world, they go with the world. Wherever it goes, these go along with it. John said, now, brethren, love not the world. Don't. Mm -hmm. I believe it was John Bunyan who made this statement. You can tell how close a man is to God by how much he shudders at the sound of the word world. Yeah. Uh -huh. mm. That'll tell the story. I'll tell how sensitive a person is. Love not the world. Mm. That's the habitat. Neither the things that are in the world... Things you, you can take, get hold of. For all that is in the world mm -hmm. are some intangible things. Mm -hmm. The lust of the flesh, mm -hmm. the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life are not of the Father, right. but of the world. Mm -hmm. And the world passes away mm -hmm. and the lust thereof. Amen. I don't know where to put this. It travels together. The world passes away and the lust thereof, but he that doeth the will of the Father abideth forever. John also says in that passage that whoever loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. If he claims to be a Christian, he's pretending. Or she's pretending. Mm -hmm. This isn't true. This isn't true. That's right. If they shape their life for this world, mm -hmm. the associations of this world, mm -hmm. the possessions of this world, mm -hmm. the direction of this world, and they say they're a Christian, they're not telling the truth, mm -hmm. even though they think, think they are. Right. If any man love the world, mm -hmm. he doesn't love God. Amen. Amen. Right. Period. Amen. And I'll be right up front with you. God doesn't love him. Amen. There are some people God detests. Mm -hmm. And you're living in his world that he's going to change. Yeah. Nobody has a right to give themselves to something God's pledged to destroy. Yes. Amen. No one has a right to do that. Now, the deliverance from this world that we're not to love, that it carries with it the lust of the flesh, fleshly appetites that have to do with the body, mm -hmm. and the lust of the eye, that's covetous, covetous type things, and the pride of life, wanting to be number one, wanting to rise, wanting to be noticed. What, there's just a lot of ways to look at it. This deliverance from that whole system was according to the will of the Father. Now, this is what something God, this is something God willed. Yeah. You want anything to do with God, anything at all. You want a prayer answered by God. You want favor with God. You want healing from God. You want a job from God. You want a wife or a husband from God or whatever, you had better shake yourself free from this world. Because Amen. Amen. God's not about to bless people that prefer what he's said to be delivered from yeah. uh -huh. to prefer people like that. Yeah. I know that that's a little bit hard, but it does have to be said because we live in a very loose age and the church is like drop the ball it's like the church is like a infectious wart sitting on humanity Amen. it's a disgrace and a reproach to god god showed it to john he said like it's like a whore yeah, yeah. i know that's a strong word but it, sometimes it needs to be resurrected along with words like bastard mm -hmm. yeah. these are scriptural words Bastard is an illegal son. Uh -huh. He would be perfectly in order. Uh -huh. 
a single mother who bore a child out of wedlock to say, say so and so had a bastard. Because that's exactly how God views it. That's right. The illegal son. And the modern church who's riding on the back of the world. Uh, she gets her support from the world. She gets her fame from the world. Gets her ideas from the world. Gets her education from the world. She's a prostitute. She's taken the affection that's owed to God alone and given it yeah. to this world. Right. It's the will of the Father. So anyone who's not delivered to the world is out of the will. Mm -hmm. They're out of the will of God. What's the will of God for my life? Freedom from the world. Yeah. Being delivered from the world. Now I want to say a word about this, <laughs> translating this age. I don't like this translation. I'm going to tell you why I don't. I think it's a stupid translation. And I do not think it can be defended. And there's a number of versions, of course, that use it. Most of the modern versions say age. Deliver us from this present evil age. But who among you has, a, has an intelligent view of what that means? Huh? Everybody knows age has to do with time. Yeah, There's one other use of age in Scripture. It's not from this word here. Ion is the Greek word, which we get eon from. Uh -huh. it, and it's uh, ages to come, but it's not that word yeah. there. Uh -huh. It means generations there. Uh -huh. So this use of the word age, the lexicographers that translated the Scripture see their brain got in a got in, uh, became an obstacle to their heart and they didn't think this thing out. It's an evil age. What does that mean? Is it going to be an age that's not evil? What exactly does that mean? What is an age going to go up in fire and the elements melt with fervent heat? Is that this is foolish? Yeah. It's foolishness. And people shouldn't banter about about it, about what this means. This means the world, the whole world system. If you want to be technical about it, from creation to the world's burned up is really one age. If you want to use the word age. But then that has to do with duration, not with the substance. Jesus didn't die to deliver us from a period of time. Amen. So it can't be limited to that. I know that that's a definition that the Greek poets used and Homer and people like that. That's, that's who used it that way. Well, that's not how we ought to use it at all. The present evil world includes the entire, what we call a cosmos, the material universe. This was terrestrial and celestial, both of them. What's, what can't be seen is above and what's beneath. It includes the entire cosmos, all the lusts that are tied to it. It's all been contaminated. The desires themselves have been contaminated. And Satan used these, uses these lusts to suck people into his, into his kingdom. This is what he uses. He never, I, a person asked me here a while back, sometime I think I'm talking to kindergarten kids, and these would be preachers that have been preaching for 30, 40 years, and he said, do you think that evil people are tempted to do good? I said, no. <laughs> no. Who's going to tempt them to do good? Does Satan do this? Does anyone in a sane mind think Satan will tempt a person to do good? And will a Holy Spirit tempt an evil man to do good? This is not true. That's right. Evil people aren't tempted to do good. That's why they're evil. There's not a wicked good one among them. No, no, they can't do good. Uh -huh. See, the tempter is Satan, and he always uses what is connected with this world. Yeah. That's what he uses. He'll put a religious dress on it to make it look really pretty and nice. But it still has to do with his world. Trying to conform you to it. 
Now let's look at this text a little more closely. Jesus gave himself. <laughs> and now there's a lot involved in that. that some of the brethren have done very well already in covering this. What it did for God, Jesus to give himself means he had to leave heaven. Yeah. means he had to confine himself to a body. It means he had to go through learning, growing, and in wisdom and stature. He had to empty himself of all divine prerogatives. He could not overcome Satan as God. He had to do it as a man. He had to live in Satan's territory. He, he had to give up his life under very difficult circumstances. The body that he had could hurt. And when he was nailed, it hurt, just like it did the other thieves. He was whipped and hurt. He was disfigured more than any of the sons of men. This was a painful ordeal that he went through. He had to he had the power to just decimate the whole crowd right there. Amen. And he stood there and took it, stood there and took the lashes, carried his own cross as much as he says he could. That's all involved in giving himself. Yes. Then he had to endure the curse of God. Then he had to endure being made sin. He never, there had never been a defiling thought enter his mind. Amen. Never. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden, all the defiling thoughts uh -huh. that ever existed yeah. from the Adam and Eve in the garden till the end of the world came with a surge into his body. Mm -hmm. All the guilt for all the sins from the eating to all the sins committed by the people in the flood to all the sins by, committed by Israel, the atrocities committed by Egypt, or the uh, abuses by Babylon and the Syrians and all society, it all with a sudden torrential rush yeah. came upon his soul. Amen. No man is capable of imagining mm -hmm. the impact mm -hmm. of that upon Christ. But see, that was involved in him giving him giving himself now if this what he was going to affect by giving himself which was delivering us from this present evil world that deliverance had to be very important for Jesus to do that Amen. that had to be a, a critical factor it's, I think we need to talk it up a little more as all believers I speak as, a, as body of all believers need to talk this up a little more because it's not looked at seriously enough yes. uh -huh. gave himself to be delivered we be delivered why because we couldn't be joined to the Lord until we were delivered yes. uh -huh. it's like they couldn't get back into Jerusalem until they got out of Babylon yeah. <laughs> it's like that uh -huh. it's like Abraham couldn't get into Canaan until he got out of Ur uh -huh. as our works Israel couldn't get into Canaan until they got out of Egypt. Mm -hmm. That's how the divine economy works. You can't get the best till you get out of the worst. Mm -hmm. You can't have the promise till you cut loose from the curse. Mm -hmm. He gave himself to deliver us from this present evil world so that we could be joined to the Lord mm -hmm. and he could give us something new. See, sin is committed by obeying the lusts which means a compelling desire or want. Sin is committed when you yield to these lusts. That is why the scriptures say we are not to obey, our, let our bodies not obey the lusts. Romans 6, 12. Don't obey the lusts. As Satan, you see, you're, here you are, you're rising up becoming more conscious of God, more conscious of Christ, more focused on heaven, and suddenly, whoa, here's this distracting. Mm -hmm. Then it may not be something illegitimate or immoral. It may not be something of that sort. Actually, it depends on your past life. If you come out of a life of deep immorality and degradation, you will wrestle with, mm -hmm. with that sort of thing. But he's trying to get you down into this cursed realm. 
Satan already knows he's cursed. All the demons know they're cursed. Uh -huh. They know that there's there's a point at a time they're going to be just they're going to be tormented. Are you yeah. come to torment us before the time? See, they knew, they knew. Yeah. Yet they're so wicked. It had the knowledge of that mm -hmm. hasn't changed them. Right. And unless you get a high, you get more knowledge than just that, it won't change you either. You can't get into heaven simply because you're scared of going to hell. That won't do it. You've got to be delivered from this present evil world, which means you lose these appetites that are called lusts. They lose prominence. All of a sudden, they don't have the appeal. It's a controllable situation now. Whereas before you were in Christ, it was uncontrollable. You just, they, they controlled you. But well, once you come into Christ, because the part of you that's going to have to pass has been circumcised, mm -hmm. see, it's been separated from you, yeah. from your essential person, even though it's living in the same body, it's really separate, Amen. separate from you. Now you're able to control this, uh -huh. this environment of lust. You're able to control it because your new man has been created righteousness and true holiness. And he, there's all sorts, there's a panoply of strength and resources available to the new creation. And so he's able to say no. And back to the cross, this sort of thing. It's marvelous, uh, marvelous to consider. The flesh and the old man are firmly anchored to this world. That's why godly people have always kind of been chagrined or repulsed when the people tried to bring, when the professionals tried to bring the world's ideas into the church. Amen. Maybe they used the world's ideas or raising finance or uh, approaching the children or for, uh, formulating good family associations or whatever. And he sort of brought the world in. Or maybe in their curriculum, they'd pepper a little bit of it with the, like psychology. Yeah. Get a little bit from the world, but see, a little bit of salt goes a long way. A little leaven leavens the whole lump. And at the point these compromises begin to be made, the degradation started and the decline back to the world began. Why? Because Jesus died to deliver us from this present evil world. He didn't die so we could master this present evil world. Amen. You can't master it. You've got to fight against it. Yeah. You can't make it your slave. You can't make the world your slave. You've got to be delivered from it. And the closer you get to the world, the world will inevitably make you the slave. You'll become the slave. Why? Because it's cursed and God's been withdrawn from it. The only reason Jesus is holding the world together at this time is so that the purpose of God can be worked out. Uh -huh. If he wasn't holding it together at this time, by him all things consist or, are, or held together or are orderly, don't spin out of control, sin has introduced a situation that it would spin out of control just like it was before he created it. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And darkness would cover the face of the deep, and it would be the same, same thing again, but he's holding it together yeah. till this thing is completed. And until then, he's delivering people from the world. So when the world passes away, they won't pass away with it. Amen. To be delivered from the world is to be freed from the domination of its lusts. That's kind of that's the kind of the interpretation of it. It's not a physical deliverance yet. <laughs> it will be, but it's not yet. But it's going to be. But it's the deliverance from the domination of its lusts. You do not have to obey the lusts thereof. That's a great... Amen. Amen. But if God's people don't know this, these lusts have such a potent effect and draw so hard upon the soul that if a person doesn't know this, that they've been delivered from it and its lusts, They'll, they'll think they're unequal to the task and they'll cave into it. See, so this has to be declared. Men cannot be delivered from the world as long as sin remains. See, because sin is the fulfilling of the lust that ties the person to the world. So something has to be done about this sin 
situation or the deliverance can't can't be accomplished it can't be carried out so jesus in in sacrificing himself giving himself he dealt with this issue of sin because he knew we couldn't be delivered from the world until this matter of sin had been resolved because that's what tied us to the world see so jesus took the sin of the world all sin it had to be like one one act was going to accomplish it so he took backward and reached all the sin back there, forward, reached all the sin there, gathered all the sin here, and he took it, he took it away. Amen. That's why sin lost its power. Been taken away from God, from God's consideration, from God's view. Otherwise, God wouldn't work with you. That's right. And so he took it away. Now, now we could be delivered. He did that in his death. But he's not taking any more sin away. He's done taking it all away. So now what he's doing, he's delivering. This is, this is the time of deliverance yeah. from the present evil world. His death took away, in his death, he took our sins away. I believe it was Brother Ricky made this point, that in his death, he took yeah. the sin away. One of the brethren did anyway. In his death, he took the sin away. And that's what enables the deliverance from the present evil world. Amen. As long as there's guilt, mm -hmm. personal guilt for sin, you can't get free from the world. Mm -hmm. yeah. You can try it. You can discipline your life. You could go through all kinds of regimentation. But as long as you have the guilt, a guilty conscience, mm -hmm. as long as you have a guilty conscience, you can't get away from the power of the world. Yeah. Maybe you can keep yourself from base, really base sins, murder and adultery and things like this, but you can't, you can't get free from it. it. This conscience has to be purged, and that's where Jesus' blood uh -huh. is able to purge your conscience. He's talking to believers, yeah. brother. Uh -huh. Purge your conscience from dead works to serve, because you can't serve God if you're wedded to the world. Yeah. If you're tied to the world, you can't serve God. So Jesus takes the sin away. That provides a basis for him to cleanse your conscience and, con and convince you, as no man can do, that your sin is gone and your, the record has been cleansed and you're not guilty yeah. in the chambers of heaven. Now you can participate in his deliverance. Amen. Amen. Now you can see, I'm sure, but this is why some people have such a dreadful time trying to get loose from the world. Mm -hmm. They don't tell you this, but they're wrestling with guilt. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about professing Christians. They're wrestling with guilt. Here's now where the body of Christ, the church comes in, and people have seen the truth to announce this glad tidings. No, the blood of Christ is able to cleanse your conscience, purge your conscience from dead work to serve the living God then you will realize the deliverance, yes, see, yes. From, the, from the present evil world. In order for us to be delivered, Jesus had to really do several things. Mm -hmm. He had to really take away sin. He had to really destroy the works of the devil. He had to really destroy the devil. Mm -hmm. He had to really plunder principalities and powers. He really had to reconcile us to God. That really had to take place in this one sacrifice. See what it was accomplished in this one sacrifice? Yeah. Yeah. The deliverance, he, he gave himself that he might deliver us. That's The deliverance is like the bottom mm -hmm. line of, a, of an equation that involved a lot of yeah. other things. Yeah. It's like the bottom result. Mm -hmm. I think sometimes people think of it as, the, as though it were the first first item no it's it's actually technically it's the last item uh -huh. on agenda yeah. which that it can be done means the old former had been the, yes. had been achieved that you that you if if you if you sense freedom from the world and you no longer feel a debtor to the flesh uh -huh. that's your personal proof that Jesus did what the scripture said he did amen he actually did take sin away, or you couldn't, you couldn't, the spirit could not bear witness with your spirit that you're a child of God. This could not happen unless Jesus did all these other things, and he has.
Praise God. Now to be delivered from the world involves being freed from irresistible urges. I couldn't help it. Yeah, this, that you had the urge, we understand. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. We understand every man is tempted. Yeah. When? He's drawn away of his own lust. But see, that, that, that temptation has to be embraced. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. Then when he, re then if he receives the temptation and he yields to it, then sin conceives. Yeah. Is conceived, uh -huh. and it brings forth death, yeah, yeah. yields death. So being delivered from the world answers all that. See, this what I'm getting at here is being delivered from this present evil world answers all these dilemmas. You are fully equal in Christ to the task of saying no to fleshly lusts and deny fleshly lusts that war against the soul, abstain from them. You're fully equal to this if you've delivered. Mm -hmm. You're delivered because that, that has made these lusts less powerful than they That's were right. before. And you, or to put it another way, you are more powerful mm -hmm. in Christ than they are. Now, there's, in closing, some implications to this fact. The world and its lusts are, in fact, vastly inferior to what we have in Christ. Amen. Praise God. Vastly inferior. This is not like trumped-up language or pumping yes. up excitement. It's not like it, it re, the things really are superior. There's a greater glory. It's a greater glory than the first covenant, which is greater than the, had a greater glory than the world did. But it was greater than that. And now you, <laughs> in Christ Jesus, <coughs> the new man is created in all righteousness and true holiness. Amen. Huh? Amen. Now you, your purpose is to keen up your uh -huh. connection with the new man and sever the connection with the Amen. old man. Or to put it in language of Scripture, put off. The old man put on the new man. One text says Colossians says that you've already done it. That's speaking of your initiation into the kingdom. Uh -huh. You came in by putting it off, putting it on. The Ephesians text put off. That means you've got to continue to keep him, yeah. keep him off, mm -hmm. off you and on the cross. And if he's not on the cross, he's on you. That's the way it is. That's right. Now, as you know, in Scripture, you have. Numerous incidents in Scripture of uh, acceptable and unacceptable people being in the same house. You've got Cain and Abel. <laughs> and you've got Ishmael and Isaac. And you've got Esau and Jacob. And you can go on down through Scripture. You have Israel and the Canaanites. And you've got this situation where there were, you got good fish and bad fish. You got wheat and tares. See? You've got us all along, all along the journey, this admixture, admixture, something doesn't fit together. It's not homogenous. It doesn't fit together. This condition exists, but this is only temporary. That's right. It's the means God's using demonstrating the angelic powers, his manifold wisdom. It's a mean he, means he employs to sift out mm -hmm. and eliminate <coughs> teaching his people through the whole process the, the superiority of newness of life. Amen. See, he's proving this. Some people survive things, and you actually sit back and you my boy, so it's really something mm -hmm. that they survived that. Well, it, what it is, is that's newness of life. That's what newness of life does. You can put newness of life, they can bob up, be bobbing in the ocean a day and a night in the deep Amen. and survive. Yeah. Old nature can't do that. Mm -hmm. It can't do that. So, brethren, what Christ has really done is clear the way yeah. for us to obtain the victory over the world. 
But to obtain the victory of the world, you have to be free from it even though you're in it. Mm -hmm. You're in it, but you're not of it. Yes. So it's a marvelous consideration, isn't it? Amen. As you think about it, that uh, if this is what Jesus died to do, if this isn't actually accomplished, it's the only thing Jesus died for that he didn't accomplish. It'd be the only thing. Uh -huh. Well, he's accomplished everything else. Yes. That's your proof he's accomplished this too. Amen. Amen. Right, brother John.